Hello everyone, welcome to the second part of the videos on redox reaction. We use oxidation state as a means to keep track of electron movement. The oxidation state should not be confused with the charge of an ion, even though both may have a plus or minus charge. Oxidation states are more versatile in that they can be applied to both ionic and covalent substances. So put simply, it is a hypothetical charge that an atom would have if all bonds to atoms of different elements were considered as being ionic in nature. There are five rules that we can use to calculate oxidation state. The first rule states that the oxidation state of any element is equal to zero. Some examples are shown over here. Magnesium, copper, sulfur, and chlorine. As long as they are elements, the oxidation state will be zero. The second rule is also pretty straightforward. In any simple ion such as this, the oxidation state is equivalent to the charge of the ion. Looking at potassium, it has a plus charge, so the oxidation state is plus 1. In zinc ion, the charge is plus 2, so the oxidation state is plus 2. In the chloride ion, the charge is minus 1, so the oxidation state is minus 1. And in the oxide ion, the oxidation state would be minus 2. An important point to note is that the sign for oxidation state always comes in front, and the number must be there. So even though Cl minus, we don't write Cl1 minus, in the oxidation state, it must be minus 1. You cannot just write minus. We look at rule number 3 now. Because many compounds contain oxygen and hydrogen, so it is useful to know what their oxidation states are. So in a compound, the oxidation state of oxygen is always minus 2. For example, water is a compound, right? So the oxidation state of oxygen is minus 2. The only exception is in peroxides. H2O2 is known as hydrogen peroxide. Therefore, in peroxides, the oxidation state of oxygen is minus 1. As for hydrogen, when it's in a compound, the oxidation state of hydrogen is always plus 1, except for when it is a hydride, and this will be minus 1. So look out for the chemical names to give you clues where the oxidation state are out of the norm. Down to number 4. The sum of oxidation states in a compound is always equal to 0. We look at water as an example. It is made out of two elements. Applying the rule number 3, the oxidation state of hydrogen here is plus 1, and the oxidation state of oxygen is minus 2. The sum of the oxidation states is equal to 0. Because there are two hydrogen atoms, we'll write it as this, 2 times plus 1, and the oxidation state of oxygen, minus 2, if we sum them up, it will be equal to 0. In calcium carbonate, this is the Ca2 plus ion, therefore the oxidation state follows the charge, plus 2. The oxidation state of carbon here is plus 4. And because we have three oxygen, they sum up to being zero. The last rule states that the sum of oxidation states in a polyatomic ion is the charge of the ion. Here we have two examples, sulfite and sulfate. In sulfite, the oxidation state of sulfur is plus four, the oxidation state of oxygen is minus 2, and we have 3 of that. And this should add up to the charge of the ion, which is minus 2. For sulfate, the oxidation state of sulfur is plus 6. We have 4 oxygen, contributing a minus 2 each, and the sum should also be equal to the charge. Now you may ask me, how did I know whether this is plus 4 or plus 6 in the first place? Well, we can calculate. If I were to give you a polyatomic ion, 
in which you do not know the oxidation state of an element, we can let it be x. We know for oxygen, the oxidation state is minus 2. We can then construct an equation x plus 4 times minus 2 equals to the charge. And we can solve for x. So these are the basic rules of how to calculate oxidation states. Let's move on to some practice questions. I encourage you to pause the video now and to try them out and then we'll check the answers together. We go through the first one. This is iron 2 nitrate. The iron 2 nitrate is made up of the Fe2 plus and NO3 minus ions. If they ask you to calculate the oxidation state of iron, we will apply rule number 2. The rule states that the oxidation state of a simple ion is the charge of the ion, therefore the oxidation state of iron in iron 2 nitrate is plus 2. Always remember to include the charge. The second one, Fe2O3, let's say you do not know what the oxidation state is. We know that oxygen is always minus 2 in a compound. Therefore, 2x plus 3 oxygen, the sum of oxidation states will be 0. We solve for x, this is plus 3. This compound is called iron 3 oxide. Now let me move up a little. Do you see some similarities over here? The Roman numerals that we have always seen actually refers to the oxidation state of that particular element. So when we write iron 2, it refers to the oxidation state of iron being plus 2. Same over here, iron 3. Two more examples. Calculate the oxidation state of nitrogen in nitric acid. The oxidation state of hydrogen is always plus 1. And for oxygen is minus 2. This one we do not know. We let that be x. We construct our equation. Plus 1 plus x plus 3 times minus 2 equals to 0 x equals to plus 5. Okay, so the oxidation state of nitrogen is plus 5. In the last example, we need to know what is the oxidation state of chromium. Oxygen is minus 2. Let's construct the equation. Let the oxidation state of chromium be x, we have 2x plus 7 times minus 2. The sum of oxidation states equal the charge. 2x equals to plus 12, x equals to plus 6. A very common mistake for students to make is to end off here. Remember that when there are two chromium, the oxidation state is distributed among them. So the oxidation state of chromium is plus 6. The name of this ion is dichromate 6. So the number in the bracket refers to the oxidation state of chromium in this ion. Alright, so do you remember this table? We now arrive at the last definition for redox, that is oxidation state. When the oxidation state increases, that substance is being oxidized. And when the oxidation state decreases, that substance is being reduced. Among all the definitions, my preferred one is always the oxidation state because it's the most versatile and it works in all situations. The first two are very easy to see, but they cannot always be used because not every equation contains oxygen or hydrogen.
The one on electrons is also quite difficult to see, especially when the chemical equation is very complicated. So I will encourage all of you to be able to master the skill of being able to calculate oxidation state, as this is the most foolproof method in this topic. We have now come to the end of this segment. We have some questions at the back and I will encourage you to pause the video and give it a try first before I go through the answers with you. Okay, do you get this right? We can see that an element can have many different oxidation states in different compounds as shown in this example of nitrogen over here. Something you might notice from all these examples is that the highest oxidation state that can be achieved by the element is usually the same as the group number of that element. Now let's give this practice a try. Do you manage to get this? Right, this table. This table kind of summarizes all the different rules that we've learned for oxidation and reduction. In the first one, CuO becomes Cu. CuO is being reduced. There are two ways we can look at this. Firstly, we can say that copper 2 oxide loses oxygen to form Cu, therefore it's reduced. The second way we can look, look at it is using oxidation state. The oxidation state of copper decreases from plus 2 in CuO to 0 in Cu. For the second one, NH3 is oxidized. We can use hydrogen in this case. NH3 loses hydrogen. Loss of hydrogen is oxidation. We can also use oxidation state. The oxidation state of nitrogen increases from minus 3 in ammonia to 0 in nitrogen. In example 3, chlorine is reduced, Cl2 gains electrons to form Cl-, and I've written the half equation there just to help you. The other way we can look at it is the oxidation state of chlorine decreases from 0 in Cl2 to minus 1 in Cl-. Okay, in the last one, H2O2 is reduced, and I'll use oxidation state to look at the last one. Okay, there you have it. So I encourage you to go and practice all the different methods until you become very comfortable at using all of them. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.